Hello, mathletes. All right, section 5.6, numeric integration. So we're taking a little bit of a break from uh, the rigors of all this integration stuff that we've been doing in the past couple of sections um, because some of these functions don't have antiderivatives that are easy to get. Um, they would be pretty complicated. So like for example, there's no easy or elementary function that has any of these as its derivative. Um, or at least not something that would be really nice. So if you need to evaluate a definite interval with one of these things, then, and you can't actually integrate it, then you can't use that fundamental theorem of calculus and you have to approximate it instead. So earlier, like way back in 5.2, we use rectangles, but they're not the only shape that you can use. So one alternative shape is a trapezoid. So just like rectangles, we can divide this region up into trapezoids uh, going from x equals a to x equals b. Uh, and just like with the rectangles, each one of them is going to be the same width or the same delta x. And then once we find the area of each of those trapezoids, you can sum them all together to get a pretty good uh, approximation of the area. So just as a review, what kind of a sum is this? Riemann. It's just a different type. Remember, there are a lot of different Riemann sums out there, and this is, this is one of them. So right here, uh, this is the area formula for a trapezoid. Okay, so let's go from x equals a to x equals b. And if we start drawing in trapezoids, and they're equal widths, as long as I can draw it. I think if you notice, the trapezoid is actually a really good approximation because it doesn't have that much uh, excess uh, on the outside and it's got um, a little bit of space it doesn't cover. So it's a little bit better than, than rectangles. Now the thing about the trapezoid is when you start using the area formula, um, trapezoids, uh, or most of the time, when you looked at it in your geometry, geometry class, your trapezoids went like this. Uh, so you had one or two parallel sides, one side that was perpendicular, um, and then another one going that way. So we got to keep that in mind uh, because when you looked at it like this, the height was this, the part that went up and down uh, that connected the two parallel sides. Well, now that it's rotated, your height is horizontal, which is weird because that's not how you normally see it. And your bases or the two parallel sides, now the bases are going vertical. So just, just keep that in mind when you, we start using this. Okay, so the trapezoidal rule. Uh, so let F be continuous. Uh, the trapezoidal rule for approximating the definite integral from A to B of f of x dx is given by, and remember this is approximating, so it's got the approximation symbol, not equals. So it's approximately equal to b minus a over 2n. And then inside of here is a big quantity. So we have f of a plus 2 times f of x sub 1 plus 2 times f of x sub 2 and then it keeps going and going and going so and then finally plus 2 times f of x sub n minus 1 and then f of b so moreover as the number of trapezoids or as n approaches infinity the right-hand side approaches the integral 
A to B, F, F of X, DX. So if you can smash an infinite number of trapezoids in there, you do get the actual area. All right, so some of you are going, well, what, what's this X1, X2, what, like, where is that? That's just how you partitioned it, so just like the rectangles. X1, X2, X3, X4, uh, and in this case, we'd go to X5. And then your last uh, um, X value is the B, and the first one's always the A. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and use it. So use the rule to approximate the value of the definite integral with n is equal to four. So you're going from zero to one, and you have to have four trapezoids. So each h, or height, because remember the height is horizontal, is a fourth. Okay, so this definite integral is going to be approximately equal to, and we're just going to follow this formula out. So b minus a, so 1 minus 0, over 2 times 4. <clears throat> so we're going to start with the first x, so f is 0, and then you plug it in. And then plus 2 f of so each h is a fourth apart so each spacing is a fourth so just keep adding a fourth until you get all the way to your uh, upper bound which is one And the lower bound and the upper bound, when you plug them in, they do not have a 2 in front, but all the other ones do. And the reason why they have a, like, there's two of them is because when you start using the area of the trapezoid, like x sub 1, it's used twice. You use it for this trapezoid, but then you also use it for that one. But the first one and the last one, they're only used in one trapezoid. So that's why they don't have a 2. Okay, and then from here, you just got to evaluate stuff. So 1 8th, uh, f of 0, you're going to plug that into uh, the function inside. Don't integrate it, don't do derivative, just take the function, plug the number in. So arc sine of 0, that is 0. Plus 2, uh, plug in the 4th, and you end up with arc sine of a half, plug in the half and you get arc sine of root 2 over 2, plug in the 3 fourths, arc sine of root 3 over 2, and then plug in the 1, it's so arc sine of 1. Alright, arc sine of a half, that's pi over 6. 2 times pi over 6 is pi over 3. Arc sine of root 2 over 2 is pi over 4 times a half. That's pi over 2. Arc sine of root 3 over 2, that's pi over 3. Times 2 is 2 pi over 3. And arc sine of 1, that is pi over 2. So you have 1 8th times 2 pi, or pi over 4. Okay, so that's the whole synopsis of the trapezoidal rule, how it came to be, the formula, and how to use it. So in the next video, we'll look at a different rule.